All right, guys, I've been meaning to do this video for literally since I started buying basically bass fishing gear or upgrading my bass fishing gear. No idea what I was buying, but I've been learning along the way. So I want to teach you guys the difference between an expensive fishing reel and a cheaper fishing reel. Now, I'm not bashing either one of these brands. This is Abu Garcia. This is Shakespeare. They're two different animals just because of their price bracket. So this one's $160. And this one's about $20. I actually bought this for $40 with a combo, like an ugly stick combo rod when I first started bass fishing uh, for my wife's rod. So that's why it's purple. I've since upgraded to some more expensive gear that lasts a lot longer. So let's go over just the basics. Form, fit, and function. These are both size 30 reels, which roughly means that they retrieve at a 30 inch rate per crank. 30 inches per crank. So they're around the same weight. The more expensive one is a little bit lighter, which adds less fatigue at the end of the day. That's great. This more expensive one will be more billet aluminum machined, if that makes any sense. So the machining of the reel is done with a CNC machine. It's not cast as this one will be cast on most of the aluminum parts. So this will be cast. That will be cast right there. I hope you guys can see that. So not always this will be cast aluminum and you can tell by um, the parting line on the seam there. This one will have a tube, it's usually polished out. So it's a form, fit, and function kind of thing. Uh, the really cheap reels where they're cast here, you'll drop it and it'll just break because cast aluminum is not that strong. The other biggest part is more of these parts will be plastic compared to this one. And you might not see them on the outside. So like this is a plastic, plastic shroud on the outside that really does nothing but protect and keep grease on the inside and keep dirt on the outside. Same with this one. Some of these parts are plastic where they should be metal if they were higher end reel. Now the next biggest part is how many bearings are in a reel. This is where the price skyrockets. This one literally has, I think four bearings, if that maybe even two, maybe just two. Bearings are expensive. They're high, high end tolerance. They're really expensive to make and they really don't reduce cost by buying them that much in bulk. They do a little bit. So you'll have about two bearings on the main shaft and then you have two bearings here and that's it on the cheaper reel. This one has nine bearings, eight bearings, basically including a, like a roller bearing set up in here. So that means there's bearings literally everywhere. And what that does is it makes it a lot smoother. I got the line wrapped around it a lot smoother and a lot longer lasting than this cheaper reel. So you're paying for the bearings, you're paying for the machining on the inside, and you're paying to have not cast parts on the inside as well. So if you do take these apart to maintenance them, same with the cheaper one, which you can do, which you should do every, every winter in the Northeast or every six months, uh, depending on how much you fish, you'll see on the inside that some of the parts will actually be cast. They actually look like they're that old cast zinc for like die cast cars back in the day, like um, old matchbox cars. There'll be die cast parts, you'll see part lines in them, basically a seam line where the part was cast. Those parts wear out a lot faster and they're replacing those bearings with either bronze or oil like bushings. They will actually wear out over time. Where these bearings will, as long as you keep them greased and lubed or they're sealed bearings, will pretty much last the lifetime of the reel. And the biggest other part of these reels is the drag system. And let me show you that right now because that's huge. So here's that drag system I was talking about. I just took the reels apart. You can see on the right here that this drag system, it looks a little bit more robust than this one. It's actually on the opposite side. So this one has a carbon matrix drag. This one probably just has a couple of cork drag systems on the inside. Maybe some, some graphite or carbon fiber in there um, or some sort of like brake, brake pad type of material. This one is very smooth drag compared to this one. You'll actually feel a fish that'll pull this when your drag's lower and it'll actually pulse. You don't want that. You want to go with a, a more expensive reel that'll have a nicer drag system in it, especially when you're fishing with like eight pound tests like I do. I've caught some pretty big fish on this particular reel with eight pound mono and this drag took up the slack. So that's what you want to do. My suggestion is spend a little bit more money 
don't spend as much as you want, but spend, you know, up in that $100 plus range on a spinning wheel. It'll last you a lot longer. Uh, like I said, this one's been around for five years. I've had almost no issues with it except for one little pin that basically wore out because I only have a couple of reels that I fish with a lot. So, so make sure you guys leave any comments below. Anything I missed, try to make this video fairly short and brief. Like and subscribe.